I'm going to do something here that I normally do, which is a little bit of a quick outfit change because two of the three things that I want to talk to you about from Microsoft Build follow a bit of a green theme. Any guesses? Microsoft Build is a developer conference, but there's plenty there to love for those of us who do low code. I'm going to take you through the announcements that I am most excited about in Power Platform. So first up, Power Apps Copilot. Now there have been some announcements about this already where we can come in and just type in the description what you want for your app. I'm going to have a live stream where I want you to help me play with this. So please pop any questions or ideas you have into the comments here and I'll link that here when it's done. But what we've seen at Build today is some next level stuff and something that I know, and this is the first of my green things, that people want, which is to be able to create an app from Excel. <laughs> so check this out. We have an Excel spreadsheet. Now, I talk to customers all the time and ask, where's your mission critical spreadsheet? Everyone's got one. Or Excel is just that most used business application. Everyone goes in and uh, I need a data source. I'm going to stick my stuff in Excel. So you end up with something like this. So now we're going to have an option inside Power Apps where we can say, start with data, upload an Excel file. We grab that Excel file, and then what it will do is create a Dataverse table based on the shape of your columns and data in Excel. This includes it being able to detect when something should be a choice column because you've got repeated options in there like open, resolved, closed, or gold, silver, bronze, or whatever that is. And boom, you've got your table ready to go. But that's not all. The single click create app button then takes that table and builds a canvas app over the top of it in a matter of like a minute or so. And it's building this standard sort of format in a responsive layout where you've got your list of rows down the side. And as you click on each one, you've got that in the middle there. And this is fully mobile responsive. Another new thing we saw at Build that's being added in here is the ability to choose specific devices so that you can preview it on different actual devices, which is pretty cool. But if you want to do more with that Canvas app, you can actually use Copilot to edit it in a way. So we see an example of coming through saying add an escalate button and then when clicking on that, navigate to this screen. So we're starting to see even more and more of that use of Copilot and natural language to build things without even needing the formulas in there, which is amazing. And then the other piece that we've got is a Copilot component, which you can add into your app that allows the user to actually query the data in your app so that you can ask it questions. What's the most common ticket category? What's the average price or whatever it is? Now, can we do this in model driven apps as well? I hear you say at this stage, this is just creating a single Dataverse table and it is creating the Canvas app. I expect nothing's announced yet, but I expect that this is all just like roadmap early stage towards even more and more of these things. But it's a very, very quick way to get started. But the thing they did preview today is that we can also bring this Copilot component into the model driven app. So there it is there asking the questions around the data inside that. Very excited to see that because that ability to search and find and in fact navigate, take me to that place in your model driven app is something that's going to be there. So you can, of course, create that app from your Excel spreadsheet or from a description of what you want it to be. And then you can go ahead and add other tables, but definitely watch this space. And I'm all over all of the different tools that are coming through to make this app building experience much easier. So next up, I wanted to talk to you about what's going on with Power Pages. So Power Pages is the part that allows you to build business business websites, and this is all connected to Dataverse. So this is not just kind of creating a random website, although you could do that, but the value of this is that you're creating something that is connected to your Dataverse data so that you can put something out into the world for your clients or customers or whatever to you know, log a ticket or um, apply for a loan or a permit or whatever it is that you want to do. So the example that they showed us at Build is around Woodgrove Bank having a student loan application. And so the first thing we see here is this idea of using Copilot now to speed up this whole creation process create a product page for a student loan application. And what this does is goes through and uses the large language model to find a layout that is suitable for that particular scenario and then presents it back to you with all of these little placeholder containers and things in there. And it says, I've created the HTML for your page. 
then we can use Copilot in there to start creating the actual content. So we want to write something that describes what the bank is and what it's about. And you'll see, as with all of these Copilot experiences, we've got these pieces along the bottom that are about add to page, rewrite, change the tone and so on. And you're in control of adding that in there. From there, like I said, the high value of this is actually creating a form or some way of interacting with the data. And usually this is quite a laborious process. But what we're doing here is to say, create a student loan application form. And a bit like we just saw with Copilot being able to create Dataverse tables for you, that's what's going on here. So this will actually create that application form, including all the pieces underneath in Dataverse and having that completely connected up to that website that's going to be out to those students to make the applications. So that building of PAL pages, portal experiences just got a whole lot easier with all of this. Currently available in US environments, hopefully for those of us in the rest of the world, not too far off, but no dates announced for that yet. But here's the last thing that I want to show you, which is the other, this is actually the right color. This is my Power Virtual Agents cardigan color. <laughs> and we've got a new announcement here of generative action. So we have already seen announced previously this idea of generative answers where we can create a chatbot like instantly by saying, point it to my website. Now we've got point it to my SharePoint document library or my internal OneDrive link or whatever it is, which is amazing. I cannot wait to get my hands on this and have a go at how this is going to work. So imagine just being able to point a chatbot to all of your SharePoint documents and then you don't have to build the topics and answers anymore. It'll just point to that and use the generative AI to do that conversational piece for you. So that's the new piece that's been announced there, but then it's gone a level up. And Charles Lamana, who oversees all of the Power Platform stuff, actually called this part out as his top feature from Microsoft Build. So I'm quite happy to own that this is one of my favorites too, and you know, totally wear the color, wear the color scheme. It's the ability to have plugins here. So now what you can do is connect to your other system. So for instance, this is an example they showed where we've got a place that's doing cruise bookings. So we've got connections here into their booking system, for instance, as well as to the weather connection. And what this allows you to do is similar to what we were just looking at, but not just your SharePoint document library and your website, you can have this plugin in here and now your chatbot can talk to your other system. And again, you don't have to build all of the question and answer and response pairs, it can just do it for you. So what it does, essentially you've just got that plug in and then you say go, there's no experience of having to build out all the topics. We can ask the question here and then follow along to see what's happening behind the scenes. And it's information in there, but it's also showing you that you're missing something if that's not quite working. So the chatbot is able to go, here's the person who says, you know, what are the last minute cruise options to the Bahamas and what's the weather like? So, okay, great. It can handle finding you the weather because the weather connector is there. But then what, where's the person coming from? Like a cruise to the Bahamas from where? So it's gone out to try to find that realize that it's missing a piece of critical information. And then the generative AI, the chat has just asked for that, where are you departing from? Now, they didn't build any of this. This is all just coming from connecting to the system. And this technology we've got now with the large language models and generative AI means that the chatbot is effectively just working off that and is pre-built for you. So then the person responds, they get their options back and we've got some lovely other things going on in here in Power Virtual Agents now with adaptive cards and beautiful displays and things. So Power Virtual Agents just got a whole lot more important in terms of things that we can do. I've always loved working with Power Virtual Agents, but now this ability to plug it into anything, and this includes being able to plug it into the Microsoft 365 Copilot or ChatGPT or whatever you want, there's going to be some really, really exciting things going on here specific to your use case and domain. And I'd love to hear your ideas in the description here. Please give this video a like if you found it useful. I'll be doing some other little snippets from Microsoft Build and low code advances. As always, thank you for watching.